Have you ever wondered how a domain name like example.com ultimately points to your app that might be running in a separate environment? Take for example my portfolio website over here, kutlasek.xyz. How on earth does it happen that I can just put this domain name in my browser and it knows exactly which app to bring to my screen or to bring to my browser? And do you know that you can have one domain name pointing to thousands of applications running in separate environments? Wait. You thought Google.com was running one or using one server to serve its billions of users? That's pretty hectic, don't you think? They use a concept called load balancing. It's pretty mind-blowing, and I'm going to explain it to you in the most simplest of terms. Hello, everybody. My name is Google. My channel is Coding 101, where we are dedicated to simplifying the most fundamental concepts of programming or coding. If that is something that piques your interest, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And while you're subscribing, let me just say... If you haven't watched my previous uh, videos leading up to this video, be sure to check out some of our amazing content where I teach on how to build your very own real-time chat application using React, Node.js, and Socket.io. We also dabbled into Firebase and learned how to use the Firebase Firestore database. In the previous video, I taught on how to deploy your application in the EC2 instance. So be sure to check out those videos before you watch this one, or you can just continue with this one. Did you subscribe? All right, let's continue. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to point your domain to your EC2 instance in the context of Namecheap and GoDaddy.com. But before we do that, I do want to explain how that entire concept works. How on earth does it happen that I can just put my domain name on my browser and the right app appears on my screen? It is through a concept called reverse proxy. So reverse proxying, this is how it happens. You use the internet to enter a domain name. So this domain name is actually an address of where certain files can be found in the web server. So there's something called a proxy that then uses, that uh, facilitates the communication between the internet and the web server. If you put a domain name like example.com, it goes to the right web server and it fetches those static files or those dynamic files and brings them to the proxy and the proxy carries them to your browser or to the internet. So this entire process is called reverse proxy. And we use Nginx. You remember Nginx? We had installed Nginx in our EC2 server. We use Nginx in order to perform this reverse proxy. Now, I also mentioned about load balancing. So load balancing is actually a concept that prevents one server from being overwhelmed by tons of traffic. So in this example that you're seeing over here, we have multiple web servers running at the same time. So we have something called a load balancer, which sort of like directs traffic. It chooses which server should be used at a specific set of time. So that if another server, let's say maybe it catches fire or it is too overwhelmed by traffic, at least other servers can be able to contain that traffic. This is why there's some important concepts of load balancing is very, very crucial and very, very important. But today, in today's video, now that you've understood, understood the background of what we are trying to achieve, I'm going to be teaching you how to sort of like play the role of a reverse proxy. I'm going to teach you how to point your domain name that you're going to be purchasing from either Namecheap or GoDaddy.com and you're going to be pointing it to your EC2 application that you had deployed or that you have put into your EC2 instant uh, as illustrated in the previous video. So the first thing that you need to do, of course, is that you need to go to Namecheap.com or you can go to GoDaddy.com and you need to purchase a domain. It's pretty simple. The registration process is pretty simple. And uh, for now, you can also just like Google some coupons and you can really save some bucks on these domain. And there's some domains that are very uh, cheap that you can use for testing purposes as well. So go ahead and do that. The registration process is pretty straightforward. We don't need to struggle with that. So um, we don't need to struggle with that. Now, after you've purchased a domain, be sure to uh, be aware of where your app is running in terms of IP. So go to your instance and just like get this IP. Now the real work begins. You're going to go to your Amazon. Remember in the previous video, I did ask you to set up an Amazon account. So you're going to go to your Amazon account and you're going to search for Route 53. I'm going to come over here to Route 53. And you're going to click on Create Hosted Zone. Now, I do want to mention, though, that I had already purchased uh, a domain of my own. So I'm going to be using kutlasec.xyz. So this is the domain that I'm going to be using for purposes of this tutorial. But uh, please do make sure that you have purchased your own uh, domain in order to continue with this tutorial. So now let's go back to our Amazon. I'm going to create a hosted zone. And what we're going to do here is that we're going to create our, we're going to put our domain over here. I'm going to just say kutlasec.xyz. 
dot x y z like that. You can choose to leave this part empty. That's all you need to do actually. And now you can come over here and click create it, create the zone. And then after you've created that zone, what you need to do is that you need to create a record. So I'm going to come here to click create record, and you're going to just click simple routing. It is just a simple wizard that is going to uh, guide you through that process. And then you're going to click over here to define simple record. And you're going to leave that as it is. And this is fine. And then as we go down, you're going to just come over here and just say IP address or another value depending on the record type. So this is fine. And then in here, you're just going to put, you remember that public IP that I had spoken about? You're going to put it over here. If you can't find this, just go to your instance and you should be able to find it in the configuration settings. So that's the public IP that we're going to be using. And then after you've done doing that, just click define um, a simple record. And then once you're done, click create records. But we're not done yet, actually. We have one more record to create. So let's just go to create record. And we're just going to click next. Define simple record once again. And we're going to come over here and just say www. And then on value or route traffic to, we're just going to say alias to another record in this host of zone. And we're going to choose the one that we had just created. And we're going to click, you're going to click define simple record, just like that. You're not done. Come over here and click create records. So now within our DNS zone, we have created two zone records. So this is where our DNS sort of resides uh, or where we control it using Route 53. So we have created some records that are in line with our DNS. But what we need to do now is that we need to connect these records with our DNS or our domain name. So we just need to take these records that you see over here of our name server, our name service, um, and we need to take these name service. We need to uh, click into our click manage, uh, manage my domain. And then I'm going to go down a little bit down over here. So you can see that there were already some name service in there, but I'm just going to get rid of them for the purposes of this tutorial because I had done this previously. So I'm going to get rid of these ones and I'm going to use the new ones. All right, so once you're done copying all those name service line by line, make sure you come over here and you just click save. The process is similar to that of godaddy.com, so there's not really much comparison between Namecheap and godaddy.com. All right, so what we're gonna do now is that we're going to wait uh, about like an hour or two. It normally takes about an hour or two, but sometimes it takes a bit longer. We're going to just wait for these records or this DNS records to propagate. Uh, so just like give it a bit of time and then come back to your domain and check if everything was done according to plan. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes since we've made the changes to our DNS. So we're going to check in with our application. I do want to remind you that because our application does not have... Um, SSL, you're going to see this not secure. There's our application. So you have this not secure over here. And in order to fix that, of course, you would have to uh, configure your SSL. And that is a subject for another day, another video, another tutorial. I'm going to show you how to do it. But if you're actually interested in that, please leave that in the comment section because I have a couple of videos planned. So I want to know if this is something that is like super important to you. Uh, you might know how to do it. And that's still fine. So yeah, so this is our application. We've managed to uh, point our domain name to our application in our EC2 instance. So you can pretty much see how simple it, it, it is. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you have subscribed. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure that you've clicked the like button. Spam the like button right now. If you have any comment, any questions, please make sure that you leave them in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time on Coding 101.